This video walks through a practice question on mode choice. As I read through the question, I'll highlight any key terms and information so that we can easily identify and refer back to these. A binary logit model can be used to describe the mode choice of a community between private automobile and bus utilisation. A survey of travellers in the community regarding their travel experiences yielded the following data. The calibrated utility function for both modes has the following structure. The question contains two parts. Part A. According to the survey data, what is the current mode split between private automobiles and buses? Part B. In the following year, due to increased levels of congestion, travel time for both modes increased by 10 minutes and the parking time for private automobile users increased by 5 minutes. Determine the new mode split. Having extracted out the key information from the problem, let's take a closer look at part A. We need to determine the current mode split between private automobiles and buses. To do this, we first calculate the utility for each mode and then use these values and the binary logic model to infer the current mode split as required by the question. We are given directly the calibrated utility function, but before we substitute any numbers in, let's first talk about the concept of utility. Broadly speaking, utility represents the amount of use you get from buying something. The value of the utility can be used to compare different commodities. The higher the utility, the more use or benefit you get from it, and the more likely you are to choose that particular commodity. In the context of mode choice, the utility for each mode is made up of different attributes that are relevant to the decision making process, shown in the table here. We can see that the waiting time, travel time, parking time and out of pocket cost all act to decrease the utility of a particular mode as they are assigned negative weights in the utility function. Let's now compute the utility for each mode. The utility of travelling by private automobile is equal to the calibration constant, which is 0, minus 0 0.1 multiplied by the waiting time, which is also 0, minus 0 0.13 multiplied by the travel time, 20 minutes, minus 0 0.12 multiplied by the parking time, which is 5 minutes, minus 0 0.0045 multiplied by the out-of-pocket cost, which is 225. This gives a utility value of minus 4.2125. We can then calculate the utility of travelling by bus using the same process. We get the calibration constant, minus 0 0.27, minus 0 0.1 multiplied by the waiting time, 10 minutes, minus 0 0.13 multiplied by the travel time, 35, minus 0 0.12 multiplied by the parking time, is 0, minus 0 0.0045 multiplied by the out-of-pocket cost, which is 100 cents. This gives a utility value of negative 6.27. Now we can use these utility values to determine the proportion of travellers using each mode. We use the binary logic model which says that the traveller evaluates the utility of both modes of transport, being private automobile and bus in this case, and then chooses one of the two. The proportion of travellers who would choose to use private automobiles is equal to e raised to the power of the utility for that mode, divided by the exponentiated utility added up for all of the modes.
substituting in the utility values we calculated earlier, we get a proportion of 0 0.8867. Repeating the process, we can also find the proportion of travellers who would take the bus. This calculation gives us a value of 0 0.1133. An alternative way to arrive at this answer is to calculate 1 minus the proportion of travellers who would use private automobiles. This is because there are only two modes in this question. So the proportion of the population taking automobiles plus the proportion taking buses is equal to 1. Moving on to part B, we are told that the travel time for both modes increased by 10 minutes and the parking time for private automobile users increased by 5 minutes. Given this new information, we need to make the appropriate changes to the table and then repeat the solution approach carried out for part A in order to determine the new mode split. Let's go ahead and modify the table of information that was provided to us to reflect the new changes. X2, the travel time, is increased by 10 minutes for both modes. And X3, the parking time, is increased by 5 minutes for private automobiles. With this new table of data, we can now repeat the solution approach discussed in Part A. Calculating the utility values for each mode using the calibrated function yields the following results. Similar to what we did in Part A, we then substitute our utility values into the binary logit model. Doing so allows us to determine the new mode split. We end up with 81.12% of the community choosing to use private automobiles, while 18.88% use buses.